Some of you are on medication for what we call an estrogen priming protocol, or if you're a recipient, you're on injectable estrogen. Now on your calendar, you're gonna see it written as E2V, which stands for estradiol valerate. That's kind of the generic name. The brand name, what most of you will be delivered will be a medication called Del Estrogen. This is a little multi-dose vial. It is um, a lot like progesterone and oil. It's an oil, it's estrogen. So your calendar will say E2V and you're gonna be looking for a box of medication. Well, sometimes it'll say estradiol valerate and sometimes it'll, the medication will say Del Estrogen. Again, this is used uh, either for those who are doing estrogen priming in their stimulation cycles or if they're in some kind of a recipient plan. They're using an egg donor, they're a surrogate, uh, they're doing a frozen transfer. This is um, one of our other intramuscular injections because again, it's a hormone in an oil. Now, what you're going to be ordered from the pharmacy by your coordinator are one milliliter syringes. This is going to be your little setup for this. You want to get yourself out a one milliliter syringe. Generally, it doesn't have any needles on it. And you want to grab yourself an 18 gauge needle and a 22 gauge needle. Because remember, this is one of those things where when you're doing an intramuscular shot, I want to draw out with one needle, but inject with another. Makes it just, you know, a new needle is a little bit sharper, a little bit, well, not as bad a shot. So, these are, it's really small volume that you use for this uh, estradiol valerate. So we use these one milliliter syringes. This is where mistakes can be made. I've had people, just because they're used to it with their oil products, they'll pull out a three milliliter syringe. And their calendar may only say 0 0.2. Again, you know, you're thinking fast sometimes, you've got familiarity with something else, and you might find that you'll grab a 3 ml syringe and draw up two milliliters of this product. No, make sure you're grabbing a one milliliter syringe, not a three milliliter, okay? And if you look down the side of a one milliliter syringe, it'll say right down the side, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 .4, etc., all the way down to one mil. That way, when I tell you your do dose is only 0 0.2, well, there's 0 0.2, not two mils. So first we're gonna attach our 18 gauge. That's our bigger, uglier needle because that's just what I'm gonna use to draw the product out. So we'll attach our 18 gauge needle. This is a multi-dose vial, so little metal cap just comes right off and it lives just like this at room temperature. Always remember to use a little alcohol swab. And with my big needle, I'm gonna draw out whatever my dose is. Now, generally it'll start out at 0 0.2. Now, if you're doing estrogen priming, usually it'll just stay at 0 0.2. But if you're a recipient where I'm actually trying to raise your estrogen level over time, you're gonna notice this dose is gonna usually go up. Maybe it starts out a couple of doses at 0 0.2. Then it might increase to 0 0.3 and maybe to 0 0.35, 0 0.4, whatever your doctor decides you need for your level. But we'll use 0 0.2 as our example. Now, uh, a lot of folks ask, especially on multi-dose vials, you know, should I make sure I always inject in that amount of air into the vial? Um, certainly you can. It doesn't hurt doing something like that at all. So if I was doing 0 0.2, I might go ahead and put 0 0.2 worth of air in there. Honestly, these are such small volumes, usually it doesn't make a huge difference. I'm gonna turn it upside down, make sure my little needle point is in that oil, and I am just gonna pull down on my syringe. Now this is oil, it's thick. It takes a second to kind of fill it up in there. Just keep pulling on down. You know, usually I like to overfill the syringe for just a minute, and then fine tune it by pushing up till the rubber stopper gets to my dose. And there's an example of 0 0.2 right there ready to go. Pull that out now. Again, I only use that needle to draw with, so I'm gonna change it. I like to pull down on the plunger and get all the medicine in the needle before I take that off. Just unscrew that right off. I open up my 22 gauge needle. 
Now, of course, this is one and a half inches because uh, this is gonna be an intramuscular injection. I did show a demonstration on how to do intramuscular injections under progesterone. So please visit the progesterone component of this, um, this video to take a look and remind yourself how to do an intramuscular injection. We're gonna go ahead and attach this 22 gauge needle. Now, oftentimes I have folks ask me, is it okay if I use a 25 gauge needle? For the estrogen well this this estrogen uh, oil is a little bit thicker it really is difficult I, i've done it with 25 gauge before because people have asked me but it's really a difficult injection seems like i've got the needle in place there for a long time while i'm trying to do it um so i, I prefer just to use a 22 gauge this really is is not um i don't want you to think progesterone and oil when you think you're taking this estrogen this estrogen, regardless of whether you're estrogen priming or on a recipient cycle, you're only doing it twice a week. And it's a really small volume and our body loves estrogen. So this guy doesn't seem to pose a problem over the long term for patients. Now I've changed my needle. I'm going to go ahead and just push up on the plunger till I see that I've primed my needle with the medication. There it is. And this shot is ready to go intramuscular. Again, biggest tips are just make sure you're using a 1 ml syringe and not one of the three mLs, and that the dose is 0 0.2, not two mLs. And that's it for estrogen.